The first question that many of you are going to have is, is this a myth? Is this a fairy tale? Is this like the kind of fanciful story that we create to tell children to warn them against bad behavior and to uh, reward them for good behavior? Is this just some mythical tale? Does it have any historical, archaeological, factual evidence that it existed? It does. Um, Scientific Reports was the first to report the findings of an archaeologist named Professor James Kennett, and he's at the University of California at Santa Barbara. So let me just set this up. He's doing uh, an archaeological dig in the same region as Sodom and Gomorrah, and he finds findings from the same time period that report the same results as Genesis. And let me, if I could state the obvious, if you are a professor at a college in the University of California system, you are probably not predisposed toward believing and supporting and defending the Bible. So this is probably not a guy on our team. And so they call the dig Tal El Haman, and we'll show it to you, and we'll show you him, uh, this archaeologist, uh, Professor Kennett, in the archaeological dig. There's a debate as to whether or not it is Sodom and Gomorrah because they can't 100% verify it. And I'll tell you why. The big sign out front that said, welcome to Sodom and Gomorrah, got eviscerated. So there's not a lot of archaeological evidence that says Sodom and Gomorrah. But here is what they reported, and I'll just read it to you from the non-Christian source. The biblical sin cities of Sodom and Gomorrah could have been destroyed by a meteor meteor cloudburst that incinerated all 8,000 inhabitants. The giant space rock exploded over the town, creating a fireball. Now, there seems to be hard evidence that a, quote, heavenly event really did happen around that time. The cosmic calamity laid waste to the Jordan River Valley's northern shore, raising a huge 100-acre city to the ground. It also exterminated other cities and multiple small villages, as is reported in Genesis. Even at that distance, the blast created a 740 mile an hour shockwave. Human remains suggest they had been blown up or incinerated with extreme disarticulation and fragmentation of bones. Quote, we saw evidence for temperatures greater than 2000 degrees. Celsius, says study lead author, Professor James Kennett of the University of California at Santa Barbara. An international team also found building materials and pottery shards melted into glass. Mud bricks had heat bubbles. These are all indications of unusually high temperatures, which would have occurred during the biblical account of the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. Here's what's interesting. There was no man-made technology at the time that that could have produced such astonishing damage. There is evidence of a large cosmic fireball close to Tal El Haman, says Professor Kennett. He likens the extraordinary event to the 1908 Tungsta event when a 12 megaton meteor destroyed 800 million trees across 830 square miles of eastern Siberia. The point is, Genesis says it happened. The archaeologists go to investigate And their conclusion is, that seems like it's exactly what happened. So let's just assume or presume for the moment that what Genesis is reporting is historical, actual, and factual. Then the question is, why would God do that? Even if you're not a Christian, you don't agree with me, you don't believe, just for a moment entertain the storyline of Genesis that this was an act of God, destroying people and also an environment And the question is, well, what would cause him to be so angry or upset to pour out such extraordinary wrath? And let me say this, in the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah, like any city, like all of our lives, it wasn't one thing that aroused his wrath. There was, I believe, a prominent sin, and that was the sexual sin, but it included other sins. Um, We are here not far from the Mexican border, and uh, if somebody from a drug cartel is escaping into our country, it's not like they have impeccable character and they have a minor flaw of drug trafficking and murder. You either have good character or you have bad character, and if you are someone that has lost your conscience and you are operating according to just absolute base desires, you're going to have more than one category of sin. And the debate in Sodom and Gomorrah is this, those who are more progressive, those who are more liberal, those who want to suppress the truth, they will go to one of the minor sins in Sodom and Gomorrah, and they will ignore the major sin. 